Well, I am surrounded by royalty to my left. Touchdown, Eddie Brown, who we are recognizing tonight as one of the all-time greats. And here's his son, Antonio. All right, guys, I've been thinking about this interview for a long time. First of all, did you dress him tonight? I've never seen Eddie look this good. Pop did it all himself, man. He was ready for tonight. Now, Eddie, I got to call six seasons of you playing arena football. You were the very best. What are some of your favorite memories of playing here in Albany? Just the fans screaming and yelling my name. Uh, the teammates I had an opportunity to play with. The love in the community. The pride that everyone took in coming and being a part of the Firebirds and winning the championship. All right, last question for real. I got to know. If we get the jugs machine out right now, who's got the better hands? <laughs> my sister, me. Pop's got more catches? More yards, more tutties, so I got to keep working. Oh, you got time, though, Antonio. <laughs> you got time, my friend. All right, guys, congratulations. This was awesome. Thank you. Love you, brother. All right, you. All right guys. Antonio for the Steelers, in his own right, a six-time pro bowler, obviously one of the elite receivers in the NFL right now, four-team, uh, four-time first-team All-Pro, and his dad, a Hall of Famer in this league. He said Pop's got more touches. Pop's got more catches. Exactly. It's I got to give it to him. I got to keep working. I, I love, love it. it. I love it, too. Uh, meantime, uh, we've seen a, this has been a remarkable night already, and we still have a half to go. And, you know, if passing wise, Albany's got some advantages here in, in passing yards and total yardage. Two minute penalties, obviously, and the, the big thing separating the two teams is Philly in that final minute was able to score back to back touchdowns. Well, the reason they were able to do that was because of the turnover. They caught Tommy Grady. You saw, uh, Defensive second, the secondary for Therese Jones, the corner on the field side, just squatted on him, got the interception, and that changed the game. But other than that, they played extremely well. Both teams, a couple of stops, fourth down stops for both teams. But good decision making early, good patience from Tommy Grady. You see him standing there and zipping in the car for one of his two touchdowns. You see, that's what they need to do more of. Get the ball to their tight end and fullback. You see Wes Moia on the hot route. And then he's able to hit Colin Taylor. Again, Greg Carr working the back of that end zone. And this is the bad. See, he sits there, and Jones baits him, is not backpelling, but is squared up, ready to drive on that ball. And that's a difference. That gave Philly another possession and a chance to put more points on the board. That's why they're down two scores right now. Grady, 11 of 18, 132, three touchdowns in that costly pick. Radaba on the other side is 12 of 22 for 110 and four touchdowns. Darius Prince for Philly, nine catches, 88 yards, three touchdowns. Greg Carr for Albany, seven receptions, 61 yards, two scores. Adrian Trevino boots it away. And here we go in the second half. Pharma Sony takes it off the net for the Empire. Sony with space. And Sony wrapped up as he crosses the 10 yard line. And that's where Albany begins the opening possession of the second half. Down by two touchdowns. I think they'll come out and be patient. And again, Coach Thompson's first year working with Tommy. Tommy, first year working with some of these receivers. Played for Coach Moss, who's on the staff as well, in Jacksonville, where he called his own play. So they're, they're, there's some commonalities. They understand what they're trying to do. It's just about getting the verbiage together so everybody understands it. It's going to take some time, but they've definitely got the right weapons out there. Colin Taylor in motion from the 11. Grady rifles it. Taylor, the shoestring catch, and rolls out near the 20 for a short gain. Taken down by Joe Goosby, the Jack. Taylor, such a reliable eight-year veteran. He's had a really nice career. He's got good physicality and good hands in this league. And good to see him uh, fitting nicely into this new organization. Actually gained eight there, so from the 19, it's second down and short for Grady. Carr is open over the middle. Carr hauls it in. Down inside the 20 of Philly with a penalty marker down. Let's see what the call is here. 
illegal defense, number 18, penalties decline, results to the play, first down. And that's Gooseby, the Jack linebacker out of the box. I'll tell you what, at, at, at that position, you're, you're, you're always going to gamble and stay on that fine line of being in or out of the box. Nonetheless, a nice route, good delivery from Tommy Grady, who's come out, 13-yard gain there. He's come out on fire. And as a veteran, you knew he would. You knew he'd come out and play well in the second half. He's off to a good start. From the 18, it's first down and 10. Near boards, pass caught. And inside the 10-yard line, fighting his way. Forward progress will put it at about the six. And that's Doug McNeil, the sizable wide receiver with an ice game. So Joe Gooseby had him. Joe Gooseby has him, but watch him move. He moves at the last second. Watch number 18 dive back inside. He has that play dead to rights. If he stays outside there, but he works back inside, gives Tommy an out. Douglas McNeil the third is 6'3", 210 out of Bowie State. He came to dozen there, and the ball down at the Philly six. Quick strike far side, and the pass too low that time. Was that a backwards pass intended for McNeil? That's what Philly is saying. Lozell sprinting around. In deep, behind the line of scrimmage, incomplete. They at the shoes of McNeil and recovered by the Philadelphia defense. And they tried to go to the stack screen, but remember I talked about how loose the Empire were playing up against it when Philly ran that play for two touchdowns. Watch how tight they are on the front of this. They're right up against it. And I'm not so sure that's a backwards pass. Ari was right there. I, you had a great look at it, Ari. Definitely, right? Seriously, it, 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 can't, it was it was clear. I mean, they can look at it, but it's definitely Philly ball. Now I'm headed over to Rob Keith to get the defensive calls on this drive, guys. I'll tell you, Ari's put in his own little workout tonight as he checks in with Keith. A team that has to overcome some mistakes here. <laughs> so that's... That's one thing that's on his mind. We'll see what he's going to do defensively after this play. Rattleball. Reynolds in motion. Reynolds the catch. Reynolds with space. And in the Albany territory where he gets chopped down by Arthur Hobbs. And let's uh, let's check back in. I think Ari's going to have a defensive call maybe here from Rob. Yeah, I got you, Brent. Uh, Rob, what are you going to call here? I don't know. What I do is I wait for the formation. All right, guys, we're going to hang out here with Coach Keefe until he sees what Philly's going to do, and then he'll make his call to his defense. That was a gain of 19, by the way, and it's right at midfield. And a, and a good job for money to get money going here. I give the signal. What do we got? We're going to play some man coverage here. All right, guys, they're going man. Going man with Prince in motion. Pass caught by Prince. Down inside the tennis. He gets hammered into the wall by Sony. But not after a 15-yard pickup by Darius Prince. Simple sail route. Watch a nice, the quick three-step drop. And Dan punches it out there quickly. I mean, that's hard to stop, especially when your flat players or your underneath players aren't deep enough to, to give a threat got, to the coach? quarterback. So this is a combo between the backside and the safety. Combo here, guys. After a gain of 14, go end zone. Going up to grab the touchdown with a marker down. Is Darius Reynolds. And that's on McGinnis. Oh, they call a nose hold. No matter, Philly still scores. And what happens is your nose guard pulls your center to the side of his helping blocker so the other guy can come free. <laughs> I didn't really see much of that there, but that's what was called. And that's, I, how, I you, that's how you get Reynolds involved, right? We talked about his right lack away. of involvement. Give him a chance to use his catch, size and physicality. Catches the hitch for a 19-yard gain, gets him rolling. 
He gets moving, gets some feel-good vibes, and then, boom, you throw it up. So a costly interception in the final seconds of the first half. Billy cashes in on a touchdown, and then a fumble to open the second half by Albany. Again, Philly cashes in, and they are doubling up the empire. Five minutes into the second half, and Philadelphia has taken control, leading Rob Keefe's Albany team 42-21. Monday night, 7 Eastern, CBS Sports Network's draft prep continues with the next Inside College Football Draft Special, The Big Uglies, as we profile the linemen you need to know in the upcoming class. Do a show on linemen. You got to bring in Aaron Taylor. Get the opportunity to host that show coming up Monday. Uh, Aaron Taylor going to join me, and uh, Brian Jones, Corey Chavis, and the SEC's all-time passing leader, Aaron Murray, as well in studio. Looking forward to our NFL draft coverage continuing. Arena football here tonight. Opening night in Albany. Colin Taylor in trouble and gets tattooed backwards into his own end zone. And everything working Philadelphia's way right now. Big time, huh? Well, I think that, that's that's an area of need. I think already is you got to get somebody on the net. Colin not used to being back there. That's not not a forte we've seen from him. Sony has had a little bit more. You got to be explosive. You got to be explosive. Busting loose. Put the ball away. Put the ball away. Is this the 11 yard line? Is this arena football? Is this okay. arena football? Or, 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 what, what, what just happened there? Was, I, it, was that like a, a 36 yard running play? Did, did that just happen? This is just a quick plunge. Watch a quick plunge. Came everything down inside. The end just gets run right through. And Wes. Mauiha motoring. He's got a pretty number on there, too, by the way. So now Craig goes end zone in the corner. It was late intended late. for Jones, but a penalty marker down with James Romain back there in coverage. I'll tell you from this pass interference, number 25. The penalty is half the distance to the goal line. An automatic first down. From anywhere inside the 15 yard line, these guys are moving so fast, covering so much ground. All you need to do is punch out and put touch on, especially if you know they don't have help from the from the corner next to them or on the backside if you're running post. All you got to do is punch out and put it up early with some touch and let them go get it. That ball's a little bit late. Fortunate to get a call there. First and goal. Eight and a half to play in the third. From the six, Grady. Pass intended for Taylor is off target at about four rows deep. And running up second down. Trying to get involved Malachi Jones here, number seven, a rookie out of Appalachian State. Didn't see much of him in the first half. A receiver at 6'3", 215, another tall well, target for Grady. Well, we talked about, you know, how good the pass rush was for the Empire. You look at the other side, and we didn't know what to expect from Rump and, and, and Sheehy being that it was Bo Bell in the middle there, mm. the defensive player of the year, and Jay Law, who was dominant at the nose guard spot. Replacing those two guys, they're trying to find their footing inside. Grady on second down at time, steps up, lofts it, and throws it away. Bringing up third and goal for Albany. And that young man with a Cam Newton jersey on is, he's like, do I really get, do I really get to be on TV and keep and this football. He just, what is he trying to do? He spiked the ball off his own head. What's he doing there? I think he's, he's just the, excited. He's like overcome he don't by the moment. You've got a little, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. he's overcome by the fact that he gets to take the ball home and he's on national TV. You know, that's like the, the best thing ever. When you come to an arena game, ball comes to the stands. Take it home. Third and goal, Craney. Got to get something. Here do. It's a touchdown from McNeil. Oh, 
he's doing. <laughs> he's doing the Antonio Brown right there. Did you see that? And homage to Antonio, who's in attendance. as his father, Eddie Brown, getting recognized tonight. This is a great read. It's just a simple trap play. He reads the zone. And what's the one thing you don't do as a defender? You don't backpedal into the end zone. Especially with no one in your zone. Get a little too deep. And a much needed score for the Empire. Welcome back to the Times Union Center. Good game, two score game, Philly in front here with another Albany Firebird legend. They honored Eddie Brown at the half. I'm here with number 82, Greg Hopkins. Greg, what does it mean to you to be back and see this sold out crowd? How it brings you back to the old days? It's a great crowd tonight. I mean, one thing Albany has always had was their fan base. I mean, they have been gone here for a couple of years, but the fans here tonight are solid, they're loud, it's exciting here, it's, it's a great crowd. Now, you played alongside Eddie Brown for a lot of his career. You scored lots of touchdowns. What made Eddie so special, and why did the fans love him so much? Well, the fan base are a big part of that, but when Eddie, when it was time to win the game, and the whole 13,000 fans were chanting, Eddie, Eddie, and everybody knew the ball was going to go to Eddie, including his teammates and the other team. The funny thing was, Eddie always won. He always cashed in, and no matter how many people knew the ball was going to go to him, he would win every time. That's what made him so great. When it was clutch time and he had to win the game, Eddie was the guy to go to. And let me tell you, if they decide to retire another number, I think 82 looked pretty good up in the rafters. Hey, I'll take that. All right. Hey, guys, this guy's another one of the Firebird legends. Absolutely. Gave me headaches for many more years out <laughs> in the West. <laughs> Kalena Boku in motion, Radapa fires near wall, sprinting down the sideline, and finally going down in Albany territory is Money Reynolds. It looked like somebody had a conversation with Money at halftime and told him to pick it up a notch as he kind of slept through that first half. A little he's bit. Gotten it going early, but a great read from Dan. Ball comes out of his hands. He sees the switch coverage out front. And he's able to put it on target, allow money to run with it. That's like, what he does best. Gain of 23, and now Radapa 16 to 26 for 172 and five touchdowns. 514 and counting, third quarter. Philadelphia up by two touchdowns. That was the margin at halftime. Wide open is Prince. It closes up quickly. His 11th catch. And closing in on 110 yards with his three touchdowns. Well, that's that's great coverage there. Good recognition. You see Terrence Moore able to get out there quickly to keep it to a minimal gain of four. Because that play looked like it had a lot of yardage to it. And Timo can cover the field, man. He is a long guy that can run. And he's smart back there at the jack spot. So second and six from the 17. Reynolds in motion. Reynolds hauls it in. Reynolds packing his way down inside the 10. And with that long body and the physicality, he always falls forward, but he falls forward for a couple of yards every time. He's, he's really strong. And it's, it's, it's crazy how much punishment, because he takes punishment. When he plays as hard as he does. Absolutely. Inviting the contact. They get the wave going inside the Times Union Center. I mean, this is, you know, it's you and Ari were obviously reminiscing before the game, and Ari said, boy, it's like I went in a time machine. I went back to 1999, coming back into this building. Franchise back in the league. Richardson can't fight his way out of the tackle. He's stacked up at the 10. To, just just to be clear in 2000 I had a win and lose here. We beat him in the playoffs Yeah, but I blew my knee out in that game mm. in the third quarter So you have some bad memories coming back. I, I, I still have great memories because this is what I remember being in this building sold out crowd into it. I mean it The people that played up here love this town so much love being a part of what was going on here <laughs> exactly. No doubt, Ari. Rada ball and second and goal. Clock winds under three. 
Helena Moku in the end zone. It's double coverage in the pass. A little bit off target from Ronopa that time. That's extremely good coverage by Varmasoni. He takes away the corner and forces to the post and is able to run stride for stride with SK. Keep in mind, folks, we haven't seen anything from PK Manley. Who had seven receptions, three touchdowns a year ago. Very versatile offensive lineman. He is a tight end right here on the left side. They've not used it. Tight end and fullback combo. Brought upon Kalena Moku unable to make the grab. It would have been kind of a tough catch around it was, the four. He, well, he's trying to turn outside, and the ball's on his inside hip. It has to come out so quick. That's a ball you'd like to see SK slide with the ball and get down. But it's an inaccurate throw from Dan. Hey, guys, you, I'm pretty surprised down here that, that Clint's going to kick it. I mean, this, you know that missed kicks can be returned. We know they're only nine feet wide, those goalposts. I think this is a critical decision. They're counting on Trevino as an excellent kicker, but it's a big moment right here, guys. It is. It's still a two-score game. I think if it's a one-score game here, Ari, this does not happen. Two-score game right here. I think it's a good call. From 25 yards away, Trevino hits up the iron. He missed it. Live ball. Philadelphia recovers. No one tried to play. There wasn't any kick catch interference. It's a live football. It's a live football. It's a touchdown. touchdown. I don't know why they all ran away from it. The officials are going to sort that, it out. Dolzell says touchdown. It hit the iron and bounced off the ground. It's anybody's ball. That's anybody's ball. That's a live football. This isn't even a hard call. I don't know what they're talking about. Recovering it for the touchdown was Neil Tibbis, the big offensive lineman. That's why I said, guys, it's it so risky to kick. But it works out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's... <laughs> It worked out better. Now, Keefe has got his challenge flag out. Yeah, there's no reason to have the flag out. I mean, what, what are you going to challenge here? What are you going to challenge here? There's nothing to challenge. It hit the iron and hit the ground. Once that happens, it's a live ball. Hey, guys, he thinks it may have been kick catch interference, but he's not throwing the flag. He's, no, that, he's that was, there's no way. No way. So off the iron, it's anybody's ball. And the big guy, Neil Tivis, gets down there and plays it off the turf once, in the end zone. Once, see, they were all behind the five-yard line, which is where you have to stay until the ball bounced. Once sure. it bounced, then they got inside the five-yard line. So Trevino fortunately misses the field goal, drills the PAT. It all works out for Tulls Hill. Forty point four in the third. Philadelphia. Their lead is back to three touchdowns. A very fortunate turn of events moments ago. We'll show you as soon as Trevino kicks it off here with Colin Taylor back deep. And the kick return game has been a struggle tonight for the umpire. Into the slack net, taken out of there by Taylor. Got to have a burst, and there's nothing there this time. He gives himself up. So this is what happened a moment ago. Trevino tries a 25-yarder. To give him a 17 point lead and uh, what happened well as you, you watch it there's no play on the ball here you got to go try to make that catch in the air but once it bounces it's everybody's ball and you see every philadelphia soul player is behind the five yard line the kick kick catch, kick catch interference rule is five yards and out they're behind the five yard line and the ball bounced that's an easy touchdown so tivis off the ball after the, uh, the kick missed off the left Upright, Tibbis able to score the touchdown in Philadelphia back up by 21. Spinning down the near side, free to the end zone. It's Malachi Jones with the Albany Empire touchdown. A 48-yard connection from Tony Grady. That was a talk about a burst. That was an absolute burst right there. Got the ball in space on a good read. You see the zone area, but man. You see the zone goes too far inside, and then he splits the defenders. 
That guy's faster than I thought he was. Man. I'm sure that's what everybody said. Rookie. <laughs> rookie. That guy's faster than I thought he was. <laughs> That's what they're saying on the Philly defense. Rookie out of Appalachian State, 48-yard sprint. Burst. Oh. He should have done the sprinter's lean right there. Boom. Touchdown. Empire. What were you just telling me as we start the fourth about this guy, Malachi Jones? we got to find ways to <laughs> keep him in ball. That was, that was one of them bursts, especially from a big body guy. Good gracious. 6'3", 200 pounds, onside kick. It's recovered by Philadelphia. A Washa. good job there. Yep, Aaron Wash has been good on special teams. He has. And, and you know what? Sometimes you got to be patient. You got to be patient and and earn your way into the lineup and and get your trust up. Do you like the onside kick call right there? I do. I do because it's tougher to score down here. They've actually stopped Philly a couple times down here. Had Philly struggling down here in the red zone. Give it a shot. Why not? So 49-35 as we start the fourth quarter. Radabaugh, 18 of 30 for 185 and five touchdowns. Darius Prince has been his top target. 11 catches for 108 and three scores. Kalanamoku in motion. Just inside the 10, Prince, the catch falls forward down to the four-yard line of the Empire. And again, they go with the quick, the double block screen. But this time, Albany gets a little forceful, a little more forceful with the point of attack. And that's how you keep it out of the end zone. You blow that initial blocker up by having somebody in his face immediately. Second goal from the four. Failed onside kick attempt. Gave Philly the ball inside the 10. They get the play from Prince there. We'll see what they have on the second. SK in motion. Radapoff fires, batted down at the goal line by Arthur Hobbs. There you see him run up to Prince and, and give him some pointers. They wanted him to go out there. Still learning the offense. So you got two players running the same direction. Prince is supposed to sit down. It's a good physical play from Arthur Hobbs. And again, I love the way this young man plays. He plays extremely physical, has a good nose for the ball. Third and goal, two minutes deep, fourth quarter. Fired out, incomplete. Dropped by Kalanamoku that time, sprinting in motion laterally. Hey, Sid, I got a question for you. What is Albany doing defensively that's taking Darius Reynolds out of the red zone offense? I, I think they're giving, just giving him different looks. And Prince not moving him around in motion. And uh, the, it's been Prince. Most of the motion has been Prince, and it's also been uh, SK in motion. Put the big fella in motion, but they're being physical with him. Hey, we saw last year, sometimes they just toss it to him and let him take it in as a running back. I mean, yeah, he's a monster that, when he gets the ball. Right, just that quick screen or that quick shovel pass to him. But right here, you've got Varmasoni in a catch position at the line of scrimmage. Look for that matchup. Fourth and goal, run up on end zone, trying to make the tumbling grab as Reynolds. It's broken up, incomplete, and a big time stand by the Albany defense. And guys, Reynolds is shaking up. Just, just, well, I'll keep an eye on it when we come back, but she, Reynolds is down. We've talked about the onside kick. Philly has struggled down here in the red zone. The Empire able to turn him away and say no. Great battle, but incomplete. Empire coming at you. Three minutes into the fourth quarter. The Empire with an offensive stand. They get the ball back now. Down by 14. Tommy Grady takes over from the four-yard line. Malachi Jones just had a 48-yard touchdown run. Going for him deep again. He got tangled up with James Romaine. And there's the late penalty marker flying in. I'll tell you, what do they say? Speed kills. And I'll tell you, you get some guys that are slow weaving you down the field, and all of a sudden you throw, you throw a faster pace out there. It, it makes you get worried. First down. 
Hey guys, here, here's an update on Darius. Yeah, he's back there. It's actually not his head. It's all along the center of his spine. He's complaining of pain. He looks a little bit woozy. I'd say for right now, it's uncertain that he'll be back. And that obviously uh, came on that touchdown try they had on fourth down. Brady, again, deep, trip ball, and over the top of McNeil, his tall wideout, again working on Romaine back there. Romaine's cutting off the top of the angle, beating him to the spot. These guys have got to, and, and this is one of the unique things about this field, is you've got to know your angle so you're able to come out at a high angle to the back of the corner if you need to. If not, you've got to flatten it out. And some of these young receivers haven't quite learned that. They've only been together a week and a half, two weeks. Now here's Grady back to throw. Grady rifles it, diving catch. Colin Taylor, and then it, and he was able to hold on to it and into Philadelphia territory. That's a great job by CT on the cross route. You see the deep dig route. Watch him drive up the field, squared off, and in the throw that brings him back downhill away from the defender. Well thrown ball, and a good job selling out, making the catch for Colin Taylor. And to hold on to him going down to the turf. 14-yard gain from the 22. Clock winding in the fourth. Albany down 14. McNeil the catch slammed into the wall around the 20. This is brand new, beautiful turf. We were down there on the field before, and this is perfect stuff. How big of a difference is it playing on a brand new turf? Well, it's a little more sticky. I mean, but it's all, it, it, you don't really, as a player, you don't really think about it. You, you know, the, the old turf <laughs> felt like the outdoor backyard patio yeah. turf. <laughs> this stuff feels like cushion. I mean, it's awesome. Very nice. From the 19, second and seven. Taylor in motion. McNeil out there. Malachi Jones as well. McNeil holds it in. Down the wall. First down pickup inside the 10 of the soul. It's a good read. And you hear hurry up coming from the bench of the Empire. They want to keep keep it moving, keep it rolling. But a good read on that zone coverage. He's able to stick it outside. He had his choice between the outside receiver as well as the in cut from Malachi Jones. First and 10 at the 11. It was an eight yard pickup. Nine to play in the game. Tommy Grady trying to bring him back. End zone corner. And incomplete intended for McNeil again. Torres Jones in coverage. You, you gotta look for the HBO and that's helping brother out coverage. The field corner drops off and helps out on the corner route. You gotta drop it down to the check down for positive plays. Those drop down or those check down plays can, can create big chunks for you. And down in the red zone could possibly get you easy touchdowns. Here comes Taylor, the motion man. McNeil and Carr out wide as well. Top it off, Maria. Maria creates contact and gets cut down inside the five. It's a nice little hot route out of the backfield. That's a way to slow that pass rush down. But if you're the receivers, you've got to run and vacate the area. Try to win on a post route across the field to empty that area out. And you don't come off the ball hard or you don't run hard. All of a sudden, your defender looks back in the backfield. And that's the difference between a touchdown and a decent game. Gain is 7 33. Still got a first down just inside the one. Uh, we in the backfield, car in motion. Grady, marker down, deflected at the line, caught right up against the boards. Very short gain to McNeil, shoved into the boards by Goosby, and we'll see what the call is. I don't, I, I don't know why he came off of Greg Carr on the top side. Riley Johnson will give us the answer. False start on the offense. Illegal formation on the offense. The tight end was covered up. Penalties decline. Fourth down. Legal formation, so fourth down. They declined it. 
from the three and a half yard line. Big play coming. Take a look. Look up top. Romaine sitting in the middle of the field. You can stick this slant route. The tight end has to be to the top here to the right side. He's not, but look at that window for the slant. All right, fourth down. It's fourth and three. They can get a first down inside the one. Grady in trouble. Back to the end zone. Deflected and incomplete. And Philadelphia gets a defensive stop. That is a great job up front. The young fella, Dante Rook, bringing it. Midway fourth quarter, Tall Sales defense with a big stop. They lead 49-35 and get the ball back inside their own five-yard line. Update momentarily on the uh, Darius Reynolds injury, which happened in the last possession as he crumbled into the back wall in the end zone. Pass caught, short gain, and with that, let's check in once again with Ari. Hey guys, so Darius, I went back there into the locker room. He's done. He's got the jersey off, the pads are off. They're looking at the middle of his spine. Good news is he did then stand up and come out and talk to a couple of his teammates. So good news, bad news, done for the night. Hopefully he'll be okay for next week. That's a good sign, yeah, you would think, right? That yeah, he's... that's a, uh, it, it's just a tough whiplashy, plus your head on the back of the wall. Tough situation. Pass caught. This is the replacement, Aaron Washa. Getting physical in his own right. He's been good on special teams and now makes his first reception of the night. Listen, for me, this is a little weird seeing another guy out there running around in number 19. Uh, Ryan McDaniel was so good for this yep. team for so long. And I'll tell you what, this young man, they're high on. He's done a nice job in camp. He gains 13 right there in the first down after the 22. With 6.05 remaining, Philadelphia leading 49-35. Motion man, Kalena Moku. Radabar lofts it to him. End zone, touchdown, in stride, Sean Kalena Moku. And they're going to get a penalty. Touchdown's good, guys. Yeah, Penalties touchdown. on the defense. For a slap. Slap to the face. 28-yard, beautifully thrown ball. He just punches out and lays it up. And look at that thing drop. Mm. I mean, that's like going in a bucket. And that's pretty good coverage by Varmus. Yeah, it Sony. is. It <laughs> is. And the ball's thrown on time until the right spots. It's hard, hard, hard to stop. <laughs> So with 534 remaining, what a turn of events. From the four-yard line of Philly, Albany was going in with an opportunity to make this a seven-point game. Instead, Philly gets the defensive stop, and then they get seven of their own, and the lead back to 21 for the third time in the game. 56-35 here in Albany. Five nineteen remaining, Philadelphia. Two-time defending Arena Bowl champs enjoying a 21-point lead. Trevino has been perfect tonight. On PATs, missed the field goal. He was off the iron, turned into a live ball, and Neil Tivis recovered it for the touchdown. Taylor takes it off the net for Albany. And again, he gets tattooed at his own five-yard line. And back down to Ari. All right, I'm here with SK. SK. You guys have had so much success over the last few years. What is it about this group? Do you guys just push each other so hard? Because it seems week one, it's like the arena ball was last week. Hey, we got good players on this team. Coach puts us in the right positions. And as players, we just got to go out there and make plays. How important is it that you've had the consistency, the same quarterback, the same head coach? How much does that help this team stay together? It helps tremendously, man. Like, Dan is our trigger man. Coach puts us in the right positions, like I said. And it makes it easy on us. Keep up the good work. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Three catches, 41 yards, couple of touchdowns tonight. Malachi Jones makes the high grab as he climbs the ladder and gains a couple. With the clock winding at 437, and Albany down by three touchdowns. Philly, you could tell that Dalzell and company, they were jacked up to roll in here tonight. 
as the big boy in the crowd. Block. Yeah, yeah. They lo you love that as a Absolutely. competitor. Rolling you love, into you love making it quiet in a sold-out arena. You love it. And they've done that successfully now. Grady intercepted again. No orange jerseys around, but James Romain makes the interception. Now he loses it. Still loose. And Albany with Malachi Jones recovers it. Are you kidding me? Romain with an easy interception, as easy as it gets. He's running back and loses the football, and then works out nicely for the Empire. Listen, th this is a frustration mistake. You got to throw it out of bounds. Your guy's already down the field. Throw it out of bounds. All right, Clint's challenging it's it, guys. He says that the play was over. He says the no. guy, his guy Romain was down. I think he was. It looked to me as if the ball's already squirting out of his hands as he's starting to go down. But we'll, we'll we'll get a better look at it. But it looked to me like the ball was starting. He was starting to lose control of it before he went to the ground. It, I mean, this is massive. There's 339 yeah. to play. Either they've got it deep in Philly, ter Philly territory, or Philly gets it back up by three touchdowns, a chance to run right. some clock here and put the nail in the coffin. However you want to look at. Listen, you, Tommy is extremely frustrated. This is not the Tommy Grady that we all know. Tommy Grady's a great quarterback. He's got to get comfortable in this system with these players, and I guarantee okay, Josh they will. In the truck. What the, the challenge was that uh, Philadelphia was down by contact before the fumble and recovered eventually by Albany for a first down. So if you can uh, give me a, a replay of that play. All right, here's the return. He's turning, still with the ball, no down. He's not down. He is, he's got the ball. He's still trying to, can you back that up? Back it up. Looks like the hand touches, but not a knee. We have a wrist and a hand, but not a knee. We got a hand. All right, keep rolling. Just the hand. Nothing. Nothing. Ball's, Ball's loose. So what we're going to do is stay, in, stay with the ruling on the field because the hand Touched the ground with the ball and it came out. It was loose and no knee was down before the ball was loose. Great job in the booth, guys. Thanks. Uh, Arena football's call to the booth. Riley Johnson, tremendous with our guys in the truck. And uh, who was on yeah, that before no, the slow? Okay. Before the slow play, who was over the field stands? The ball was loose before the knee was down. First down, Albany. Uh, uh, can we bring in Ari because you've been around set for a long time. I mean, he's. It's not enough that he's celebrating that he was right on the call, but he won't even let me, like, you know, get a sentence in to wrap up the call to the booth before he's got to pat himself on the back. Ari? I'm sorry, Brent. Can you please <laughs> right. rephrase that? Oh, you know, your old buddy said Bonner up here is so busy celebrating the fact that he got that call right, and I just... Oh, he's real pleased with himself. Yeah. You got to bring him back down to earth occasionally. <laughs> they don't call him QB1 you mean, for nothing. You mean back down to 5'8", five, 5'9"? Five, <laughs> oh, Easy. Listen, he is, he's built like a brick. Uh, that one is thrown away by... Hey, guys, on a lighter note, something pretty funny. Three different Philadelphia Soul players said the same thing to me. They said, this isn't any homecoming. They shouldn't have scheduled us. Mm. They're like, you don't bring the two-time defending champs on opening night Ouch. if you want the home fans to enjoy the homecoming. You know who does? Ouch. CBS Sports Network. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ouch. <laughs> it's a, well, it was a perfect listen. setup for for this, for Philly to, to come in here and do this, or for Albany to have a triumphant return. <laughs> Tommy Grady with time. Grady. That one is caught. I think when, when Colin, when he's running his routes in the middle up against James Romaine, James is so patient with him. He beat him earlier on, on a post route, but he is so patient. He allows him to weave and just stays in his back pedal, stays patient. Flag down, pass caught, short one, ball loose. Scooped up by Jones. We'll see what the marker is with 228 remaining. And again, Philly up by three touchdowns. Illegal defense, illegal rush, five-yard penalty. All 
I don't know. First ten. You've got to take care of the ball against this Philadelphia defense. They were plus 19 last year, plus 19, and that's how you, everybody talks about Rodabaugh and their money rentals and their offense. But this defense, 21 interceptions a year ago, a couple tonight. I mean, this defense has been really good over this stretch for them. From the nine. 207 remaining. Grady retreats, fires, and throws it away. He hesitated again. He had Malachi Jones open if he threw, throws it on time. How much of that is simple rust? You take a year out of the league. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not, I don't know if it's rust. The problem is when you're watching a guy run a route, you don't really know when he's gonna break it or not. And that's that trust factor. Yeah. And and Tommy's banged up. He called for the trainer. Yeah, holding that. It looks like his right knee, right? Yeah, they're going to warm up the Boy, backup right now. This is for, for what started out as a tremendously promising and fun night here in Albany is kind of coming to a, a disappointing haul as the fans are hitting the exits. Your quarterback, Tommy Grady, has really struggled down the stretch of this game, and now he gets hit low and limps off the field. And keep in mind, said the backup's never thrown a pass in the AFL. Yeah, so faithful. it's not a great situation. Mike Faithful out of UCLA. He's a rookie, 6'2", 215. Well, the one thing that we know Rob Keefe is not afraid of is young talent. He is unafraid of young talent. But the, the issues right now are a little bit bigger. You've got a guy that's used to playing at a certain speed, with certain things done a certain way, and the, the pieces aren't exactly in the right spots for him just yet. And as he sticks around and, and continues to develop what this offense is supposed to look like, it's going to get better. You've got to be patient with him. It's going to get better here. So Mike Faithful, rookie out of UCLA, in for the injured Tommy Grady with a minute 20 left. Second goal. This Philly is going to begin 1 0. Faithful way too tall that time. Intended for Colin Taylor. Philly's going to start 1 0. And Albany, the back in the league nearly two decades since they've been in the Arena Football League and this new franchise, uh, the Albany Empire. So much promise, so much excitement tonight. They're going to come up short here at the one minute warning and begin the season 0 and 1. One minute warning in Albany. Back after this. A minute to play in the game. Philadelphia in control here in Albany on opening night. The toughest sport on dirt takes the stage tomorrow at 5 Eastern for the Tacoma Invitation. The 25th PBR Unleash the Beast series continues right here on CBS Sports Network. Philly will begin 1-0. Albany expansion franchise will begin 0-1. But the bigger story is Tommy Grady, their starting quarterback, who went down moments ago with a knee injury. Mike Faithful in there right now. We'll get an update from Ari after this play. Is Faithful, the rookie out of UCLA, facing a third and goal. Malachi Jones in motion. Look at end zone. Caught. And then bobbled and then caught again. No, it was touched by a fan in between the bobbling and the and the catch by Malachi Jones. That's, that's a great eye right there, partner. <laughs> that's a great eye. And again, they, they isolate to the field, isolate to the field and try to throw the post route. He puts a nice touch on it. But right there, finishing the play, Therese Jones slaps it out. But you see the fans back there with the hands on the ball. I think they should count those going forward. If they're part of the party, they're part of the party. I mean, they, it's the party zone right down it there. Is, it is. <laughs> so that was a good throw by Faithful. It was. Um, we'll get that update after little this bit, play. A little bit, a little bit, a little, little bit late. A little bit late. He's a rookie. You gotta, you, yeah, First you got to, when your guy you has to turn back and face a defender and, and also as a receiver. When that ball touches your hands, you got to snatch and go away. Yeah snatch and turn away and not allow that guy to be part of the play fourth and goal 
56.2. McNeil in motion. Out there with Jones and Taylor. Faithful in trouble. Lofts it in zone incomplete. Now let's check in quickly. Ari, uh, do you have anything yet on Tommy Grady and that injury yeah. a moment ago? Guys, I talked to Rob Keefe. It's actually, they were really, it was a pretty good scare. They think he's going to be okay. I don't expect him to play given the score and the time, but they think he just took a shot to the leg. They think he's going to be okay. So the preliminary report is pretty good. Good to hear. So Philadelphia closes this one out nicely. On defense, especially here, another stop, and with 50.7, they get the ball back, and Listen, they can run this thing out. We're, we're, we're sitting at a tie, tie ball game coming down the stretch in the first half, playing the onside kick game, and all of a sudden, boom, you get the quick turnover. Philly scores, yep. and instead of a 14-point swing for the Empire possibly coming out at half scoring, Philly puts two quick ones up and, and jumps out to a two-score lead. And that was a difference. This game changed with 33 seconds left in the first half. Taken knee. 48.9 now. Timeout. It's still strange for me to see this, that you, you can take a knee when you're leading. I'm so used to the old rules, but that's been changed. You don't you no longer have to gain positive yards when you're up. Under a minute. I kind of like it, to be honest. You don't. No. But change is good sometimes. This is obviously along the lines of the outdoor game, which it's, I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I, I, certainly there are some well, awesome that? differences between the two. Okay, we got another update here from Ari. Hey, guys, good news. I just talked to Darius Reynolds. He says he's going to be fine. He had a big smile on his face. He was out here congratulating his teammates. So hopefully he's good to go for next week. That is good news indeed, Ari. So with the two big injuries, he and Tommy Grady in this game, it appears that, again, preliminary with Tommy Grady, but doesn't appear early on to be anything too serious. I mean, it's, it's a learning lesson, a learning process, and not only for Tommy and the receivers that are trying to get some cohesion going, but for Coach Thompson as well. Maybe trying to do too much? Not, not necessarily, but you get against a team that's as experienced as Philly is, especially in the secondary. They can show you so many looks and play so many different coverages. It makes it tough on a lot of people. It makes it really tough. Ari, we're going to hit you, obviously, for the interviews because we're going to have some time here at the end. But just I'd like to get your take on on what we saw here tonight. Anything stand out in particular for you? What stands out to me is that Dan Rodabaugh really has command of this team. He's so vocal now with his guys. And, and said, remember back a, a number of years ago when he didn't play well in the big games? And he always wondered, would that, ever, would that moment happen? Well, now he's the back-to-back -back Arena Bowl champion and he just carrying himself differently even the way he was interacting with Tommy Grady and the other team he's walking around like he owns it that this is his stage kind of like the way you did said when you knew what you were doing and you had that confidence that you had the support around you to win consistently and I'm telling you what I'm taking away from here is Dan Ronabaugh's back and he wants to be first team all arena and lead this team to their third straight title yeah, and I think he prepares that way. And the one thing is, you talked about us watching him kind of grow up and develop, and it started with him, you know, he hadn't had any success against Nick Davila. Yeah. And then they beat Arizona, and then they beat Arizona in the championship mm -hmm. that same year. And that kind of got him that swagger. Yeah, and that, that I'm the king of the mountain right now. And the next year came back to do it again. Well, remember that, that season, the first year they beat Arizona, we were actually at a post-game party in Philadelphia. And I said in front of Clint and Dan, I said, if you played Arizona 10 times, you might win once. And when they won, they reminded me that that motivated them. <laughs> that they were like, you don't know what you're talking yeah, about, this Wolf. Is two we'll or three. take down the Rattlers. <laughs> this is two or three, yeah. Wolf. So I got schooled a little bit, but no, I, I, I think that Philadelphia, they showed a lot tonight. And I'm telling you, that Darius Prince is a real nice player. Mm. Well done. We're going to hear from Ari with uh, the victors here coming up. Philadelphia comes into Albany and, and ruins the party, quite frankly. From the final 33 seconds of the first half until the end of the game, they controlled it. And they beat Albany on opening night, 56-35. Philly begins 1-0. And the Albany Empire.
big time positive that they sold this place out and had an unreal atmosphere tonight. Electricity in the building, but certainly some work to do as they begin 0-1 as they lose 56-35 and right back down to Ari. All right, Dan, they just asked me what was my takeaway from tonight. My takeaway was that you come out here like you own the place. It feels like you've got the confidence. You've been a consistent winner. How do you feel about this team, and can they win three in a row? You know, that's a long way down the road, but one play at a time. I'm glad that we answered the bell tonight in some tight situations. we got to clean up the red zone offense, no doubt. With our veteran players, we need to be much better in the red zone. But I'm proud of how we were able to come over, overcome some adversity and then take it to them on times when we needed to. we got some young guys. we got some vets. we got a great couple coaches who can really get us in the right spot. Well, speaking of a young guy, Darius Prince really shined tonight, Show that he is an elite player. You pair him up with SK, Darius Reynolds, that's quite a combo. Um, you know, we're very fortunate to have those type of players, but they're not just great players, they're great dudes, too. And they love to come to work. They work their tails off every week, and that's why we're successful. We practice hard, like I told you. Next week, though, when it's time. And you've won the approval of Seth Bonner, so you know you're doing something right. I'm sure Seth was giving it to me, them, some of them bad reads in the red zone, but that's okay. He's supposed to. He's one of the greatest, but we'll take it uh, one play at a time, and I guarantee we'll be much better in the red zone. Congrats on the win. Thanks, sorry. Go <laughs> Good stuff. Dan Rodabaugh with Ari Wolf. More to come from here in Albany is the sole and opening night win by 21. 56-35 is the final as the Arena Football League 2018 opens tonight here on CBS Sports Network. It was a tremendous atmosphere and a fun party. It started with the uh, street party downtown and a sellout crowd inside is Albany return to the Arena Football League for the first time since 2000. It ends up in a loss, but, um, you know, Philadelphia looking for three straight Arena Bowl titles. It's a tough foe to welcome in on opening night, but overall a really fun night here. It was. The excitement's back in the capital city. I mean, come on, man. This was so much fun to be a part of. And I tell you, when this Empire team get it, gets it together on offense, it's going to be fun. Explosive back in this building like it used to be. Upcoming schedule on CBS Sports Network. Got you covered every week. Baltimore and Philly next Saturday. Following week, it's Washington and Philly. Then Washington plays at Albany here. Albany on the road against Philly on May 19th. Because there's a bye on May 12th. Then Washington and Albany on May 26th. Going to be exciting season of arena football. As we say so long from Albany. Downtown at the Times Union Center here tonight. For Seth Bonner, Ari Wolf, and our entire crew. I'm Brett Stover. Next Saturday, April 21st, the AFL returns to CBS Sports Network. 7 Eastern, the Baltimore Brigade head into Philly to take on the soul. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.